danger excites me, but I can't fully enjoy it when I smell like beer and body odor. So I prepare myself with a manly scent of standard bearer danger zone. Because bad things will happen to a standard bearer man, but it won't smell like something bad. Because the secret to smelling clear is a trooper. And when you smell of standard bearer danger zone, trust me, you'll smell like you have nothing to worry about. You smell like you look am amazing. I know. <laughs> Welcome all you grand Cenobites. It's Propaganda Saturday. It's Deluxe and I'm here to bring one of my favorites. It's been like a year since we played this. I can't believe it. If you quizzed me, I would have thought it'd been like four months. Um, and I've made a lot of changes to this white infect list that usually gets there. But thank you for joining me nice and early. Dreamer Stango, Nim Chimsky, Mindstep, Daryl, Superfan. Woo! We've got a new edited commercial break from courtesy of Pawn Stars that I collapsed into about a three minute chunk. We've also got a new uh, top 10 white creature list thing coming up if you haven't seen it on YouTube yet. Enough of that, off to the deck, 18 lands, four of them are dens, two grottos. We're not mixing up colors here. This is just for the scry ability. We've got two fangrafts to bring things back from life and the rest are basics for 18 count. The big difference here is we got rid of Sentinel's Eyes and we went with Crawling Chorus. This is mostly a uh, concealed seed to um what is it the uh tithing blade that's everywhere and i'm this card's really growing on me i don't i remember bad mouthing it i don't remember why i should probably rewatch my own videos so um yeah it's a uh, pretty interesting so we've got a protection package in Benevolent Bodyguard and Benevolent Blessing. It's quite the Benevolent deck. Four Crawling Chorus, four Armors, four Umbras, two Solid Footings. Uh, for mostly the uh, trick of this, it ends the game real quick. We've got four Murs, four Recommissions, four uh, Leonin, Lost Leonin, and of course all that glitters uh, supporting the Ancient Dan and some of our other stuff. And even the Crawling Chorus when it dies, you know, it's a nice little bonus here. In our sideboard, we've got the... Uh, uh, Lone Longbow for those fog matchups. Three Revoke Existence. I found this just to be better than um, going all in with the dust to dust thing. It disrupts early when you need it to and it can grab a journey to nowhere. Got four Lone Missionaries for those uh, Bolt matchups as well as Prismatic Strands and four Macabs here. Um, sometimes we can get them back with this against a control deck late and stuff. So a lot of fun, a lot of history with this list. Probably our most requested one as far as, um, you know, people wanting to chime in and play it that's up there with uh death touch ping kind of the two propaganda standout like rogue lists that actually do pretty decently so yeah pretty cool yeah i um i realized the other night i was like man i used to have a lot more vigilance in this deck and i slowly started getting rid of sentinel's eyes i don't know if that's the right play or not um i really like sentinel's eyes too it's one of those really cool spells i think i argued and i still do that it's a great card to kind of play mother may i you put it on the creature if they zap it you're not really out a two for one because you can just bring it back with like two cards from escape so yeah we want to play we'll open this up we've got protection two creatures we'll keep don't have much firepower but you don't need it when you're playing infect in fact in our little best white creature list i technically should have been fair and put this one in there because percentage wise this is a very heavy hitter I think it's the top rated creature as far as uh, damage per like mana and stuff when you add in the infect uh, variant there. So, well, we might as well bring this in case we do drop into a uh, all that glitters. But I was thinking of even cutting one all that glitters. It's uh, such a removal heavy metagame. I usually am l looking at it even when I can play it because I don't want to run into a snuff out or a bolt or something. So, greetings. Love this deck. Got one of my own of my own inspired by deluxe hey nice to have you there um marthaler i think is how you'd say that <laughs> all right well whatever we lay out first is going to die that's almost a certainty i was hoping for a recommission there it would have made my plan a little bit easier so because of that i'm going to lead on the creature that's probably not going to turn into a 3-3 against a demir opponent now if this was a forest i would have played the leonin first because there's going to be a lot of blocking going on in that Icker Claw Merc and eventually get there. But 
How good would uh, glitters be here? But see, even here, you know, I want to wait a whole turn so that I have Benevolent Blessing backup plan. All right. Unless they're on uh, Defile, I think we're, we might be able to attack. That'd be pretty cool. Thanks for joining me nice and early. We got a lot of people in the chat already. Good times. Oh, before I forget, now there will be no show next week. I'm going to be in Washington. I'm going to actually go to the Mox Boarding House one or two days, maybe even three. Uh, be hanging out there. So anybody in the upper Washington uh, area, Seattle area, might be cool. Check some things out. Hmm. Well, this is interesting. I really want to sit on a blessing here. So I'm going to play this out and uh, just attack here. Keep things honest. Sit on that blessing. Next turn, we'll be doing some stuff. Hmm. I wonder if it's worth... Got to be careful of um, suffocating fumes here. This is probably what they're digging for. That's why I'm not going to play a Benevolent Blessing in response to this. So. I'm not going to be streaming next week. No, or there will be no show. It's rare that I miss one, but uh, going up to see my son's new house and all the goods. All right, we have infected them. We will sit stand by and prepare to uh, play defense here, which is what white specialty is. Insomniac images in the house. Good to have you with us. All right. Yeah, I got this pretty cool clip I dug up from uh, Pawn Stars, and then I edited it down to about three minutes, so... That was pretty fun. So now a tithing blade here. I don't really care. All right. So if they had the thing, they would have played it. We'll do this. Keep our guy alive. Call black unless there's a snuff out headed our way. Which is a great card against us because they don't really have to worry about their life. But having crawling chorus in there and bodyguard, a lot of times, um, that's, that's a huge exaggeration. Sometimes, rare times, you can actually kill them with honest damage because they, they hunt your infect creature so badly and then you just make like an 8-8 bodyguard and get there sometimes so this helps go that way out because it does both damage occasionally <laughs> bacon master in the house all righty and uh do, 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 do. we got nim chimsky and we've got dreamer stingo who sent me the most awesome list um i still haven't really dived too deep into it but i was just blown away by how much effort he put into it it, it, it had like a full-on voters guide uh, uh, how to play this uh, it was just incredible man if they got suffocating fumes this game is over i wish uh, benevolent bodyguard did that but yeah dreamer stingo sent me like uh, all these graphics to go along with it almost like a, a voting campaign like <laughs> vote for this like two docs so pretty cool so maybe we'll play that in a few weeks i still have not sleeved it up i've noticed that MTGO Traders, which is usually who I use, and I still have like $8 in credits with, which goes a long way in Popper. It's completely offline now. I haven't seen them online in like two weeks. I hope I'm wrong about that because I could get a lot of free stuff still, but oh well. I tried to include a lot of cards you'd like to play too. <laughs> Appreciate it, my friend. Yeah, that was nice to see. All right. Showcasing why this deck works when it does, but we're just one fumes away or a Hadar from getting just wiped out here we'd have one creature left over but we almost got him dead we just need to find a glitters or something here there be the terror now the problem here is that uh actually i'd really like to see a first strike something shenanigans happen here benevolent blessing feels really good here but we still have to watch out for a uh, snuff out and at this stage of the game i think they might have it is it worth doing eot Fox there. It's not that big of a deal. I guess we're going to put it probably on the, the mer Oh, what a top deck. What a top deck. This is greatness. Okay, we'll do this to here. I'll throw glitters on here. Since it's already protected, I'll just call um, blue here so that they will call blue. They could still snuff out another one, but so we're protected from their deck. And we'll attack for the win. There we go. Woo! Against a pretty standard tier one list. Demir. Put a W there. All right. This is all about fumes and such. So, boop, boop. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Eh. 
I don't think I need any of this stuff. I think I'm just going to roll it back. But before we do, we're going to put a priest between the two grottos and a glitters in the middle of plains. And we'll put one umbra between the Leonins. Actually, not between. Let's be odd. We'll put it in the second spot. That's our sideboard. And wink, wink. Do, 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 do. So, yeah, I had yesterday off. And I'm usually in my studio anyway on Friday working remotely. So I just turned on my other edit system and still edited all day. So you got that video yesterday of the top 10 white creatures, which took forever to compile. The blue ones seem to be a lot easier. Woo! Sometimes I like these no land hands. It's, there's no question. There's no temptation. It's just, you can't keep this. All righty. Oh, yeah, I think you're right there, Nimchimsky. We'll mulligan this. Two lands. Protection for days, but not much in the way of uh, creatures. Hmm. I got to mulligan this. Uh, now we're stuck in the keeps land. We're just keeping here. We'll get rid of uh, two lands. Done. Got protection, and I really like seeing recommission against black and red decks. It's They usually have an answer in their opener, and then you've got the answer to the answer, and then usually protection can follow it up. So good times, good times. Ooh, doo -doo. If you follow uh, UFC at all, I know back in like November, Dana White went on this three day uh, fast and he had, there's videos on it if you just search Dana White fast or something and he, he had a, some super doctor showing him the way and stuff. But there's this certain expensive bone broth that you can have on one of the days and then this electrolyte thing that's like, so I'm going to try it Monday through Wednesday. And uh, just for, there's a bunch of medical benefits to it. I mean, I'm not making any news here about that, but uh, especially like the three-day number, there was quite a, quite a bit more science coming in on that and how it's able to, it's hard to know how they would know that, but, you know, just eliminates a lot of potential like cancer buildups or if you were going to have them, can technically, according to the doctors, eliminate them or keep you, keep you safe longer and stuff. So who knows? If I like it, maybe I'll start making it like every six-month thing or something. Yeah, I like to hide the word win in the name of the list. <laughs> Memphis ran. What the hell is that? Autophagy? I'm probably saying that incorrectly. We're losing this game. I, you can just feel it. We're just drawing all tricks, lands, and nothing else. Hiya. Okay. And I was just thinking of that critter. I'll walk into a counter spell, but then it'll come back at 2 5. Yeah, I've got a, a really cool electrolyte mix, a little watermelon flavored one that I found uh, via, there were there were just two products to get and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna get the right stuff and do it exactly as they say. I've done like one or two days before. I don't think I've ever gone past three though. I do remember feeling pretty energetic and amazing after that first 24 hours. It's funny, it just kind of, your body's like, oh yeah, I guess don't need it right now. That's right. Okay, yeah, I think I heard him say something to that effect, but I mispronounced it, didn't I, Memphis? All right, we've got a critter out, feeling good. Hopefully the Umbra can stick. You're going to get the right stuff. <laughs> Sloth Fun, what a strange name. There's that obnoxious. We've got a neighbor that just got a new motorcycle, and boy, they sure like letting everyone know about it. It's like, run, run, run all the time. Just like, oh, we get it. You got a bike. Don't need to wake up the neighborhood. Hopefully you guys can't pick that up in the mic. Boop. Yeah, unless uh, Tithing Blade leaves the metagame, I think these little crawling choruses are kind of here to stay. It sure does. We haven't, well, we felt it that first game. It just does make a difference. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm, what I'm walking into here. Might be worthy of a um, recommission on the bodyguard right now. Let me, let me Umbra here. If they've got a snuff out, I can, I can recommission it still. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, given what this deck is, 
I, I still think recommissioning the bodyguards to play here. Now if they snuff out, I'm in, I'm in deep trouble, but we've... So now I'm blade proof and I can at least keep our uh, priest alive. Still have only done one here. Ah, sure would be cool to uh, top deck solid footing with glitters. Just be like, see ya. Oh yeah, that would be pretty cool, Dreamer Stingo. Yeah, that's the point. Memphis ran uh, the 72 hour point. Uh, the little bit of research I did after the fact, it was like, I guess they were like, you don't need to go extreme with like a week. They said all the benefits are achieved in that first three days. And so good news for people like me that, or just humans in general. I mean, who doesn't want to eat, right? But it's always, from what I remember, that first day is always the hardest and that's pretty smooth sailing. All right, they're tempting me big time. Let's see if that Umbra sticks. I might just go all in here. We do have Vigilance, so... Uh, that first strike's going to be a lot of fun. I could call blue. I'm just really afraid of a snuff out, so that's why I want to make sure that Umbra fits first. All right, let's go for it. We're putting on the Umbra. And we're putting on the glitters, which isn't going to be all that great. In fact, it's so ungreat, I might consider just attacking here. That would make that hit for two. I'd have just enough to uh, kill the thing, but I'd, I could use my... Protection from blue. I, mean, I could do it right now. I'd rather, I just want to run into this. I could protect it if I need to, and I've got an Umbra on it, so. So mean that that doesn't tap. Vigilance here is just brutal. They double block. I'm going to have to, yeah, I'm going to have to do both. Okay. Let me double check. That'll be a two. That'll be a six. That'll be enough. We'll do like this. We'll go like this. Call blue. I had another artifact or two out, and this was a bit more substantial damage. I would I would do that, but for right now, we're just going to really neuter their uh, team here. Now we're really afraid of a blade. <laughs> Porcelain pair. <laughs> Usually we can get we can get through any sort of combat double blocks, but those were just too big, just just by a little bit. Two of the biggest critters, and we're just going to keep uh, diminishing their returns here, even if they attack here. We only take two. We completely gut the other one. This is very good sign because it suggests maybe that they're on more of counter magic instead of removal here. Recommission feels really good here. Yeah, I can do it again. I'm gonna. We'll see if it works. Recommission. It's clunky, but you can get there. All right, we'll try this again. I don't really want to pull the trigger. All right, <laughs> they get the point. Boink. And just like that, folks, woo, here we go. Yeah, when you add up all the uh, the ways to get stuff back from the yard between uh, the Haunted Fengraf and, um, oh, there's a reason I have this up here. Boop, there we go. The Haunted Fengraf. And like we just saw, recommissioning a bodyguard sometimes can be the right play. Now, I could have tripped it both times to get in, and that would have been lethal too, but... That deck can just reset so quickly with its crack back that I wanted to uh, really reduce their uh, effectiveness. Yeah, I want to play first. One land, yuck, mulligan. All right, we will keep this. We like everything. Ugh, this is going to be weak until something else shows up, but by getting rid of one, it's going to reduce it. But I think this is the pull here because something will die. And I don't want to be a, you don't want to, this does not have infect. It's just, say that to yourself when you play this list, because you do not want to ever enchant it. Maybe with a protection from spell, but that's it. You don't want to put any boosters on it. Plays completely different. You really wanted a, a Western set, Murphy Black? Uh, pretty happy with what they're doing with it. I was, when I first heard about it, I kind of, you know, it was like, mm, squinch my face up and f just did not feel very Magic Universe-like. But uh, so far, so good. I like what, a lot of what they're doing with it. I couldn't believe, I know that gets worse with age, but it's not like I'm that old. But I was looking at, you know, I was like, oh, I feel like playing White Infect again. And I was like, oh, I just played that. And then I looked in the video history and I'm like, like 13 months ago. I was just like, oh my God. Feels like I would have bet money, like very good money, that it was within, I don't know, five months. 
I had done that. So really want to just top deck a land here. Even if uh, the priest bites the dust, we can recommission it. And then it's a 2-5 naturally. It's so brutal. Often gone back and forth between Lone Missionary and the sideboard. And then there's that one that says choose one and it's three things. You can put a counter on it or you can like gain four life or destroy an enchantment. If anybody can bring that up in chat, I'd appreciate it. I'm forgetting the name of it at the moment. All right, double inspectors. There's nothing going to get by these guys. And yeah, this doesn't do wither damage either, so it takes a little getting used to when you're so used to playing in fact. And no, it's not an April Fool's joke that I'm uh, not having a show next week. Yeah, this is really frustrating here. Could get in one. I really needed to draw land there. So obviously I could trip bodyguard, get in for one recommission. I think that's a bad play. We're just going to pass the turn here. Another options, you know, ethereal armor on something for, to play defense. I'm not too worried about 2-1-2, two, two, so. Light of Hope, that's the one. Thank you, Nim. Oh, they're not attacking, which is another benefit of in fact, unless it's usually like a red deck wins list or goblins or whatever, they usually, once they feel the sting, it's just like, oh, I better keep something back in case there's some new shenanigans headed our way. Hey, yay, yay, we are really drawing dead here. We just need one land to really get things rolling. Could be attacking and making these inspectors very weak. Just going to hold back. Had my second follow-up with the dermatologist, so my forehead might look a little shiny. Had to put some lotion on it, and they did one more round of just mist zaps, or herbaceous hyperplasia, I think is what it was called. So I'm all done with that nonsense now. Bum, 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 bum. It's so nice and rainy here. Loving it. I feel bad for my brother, though. He's in the construction business, and he's literally getting rained out of work. California's been hit pretty steadily all year, or all this year, you know, since like October. Missing a lot of pickleball. My wife and I playing pretty good. We're supposed to have a lesson today, but I don't think it's going to dry up in time. Yay! Oh, I'm happy our opponent didn't do anything with those turns. We'll bring this out. Uh, yep. I think we're just going to hold here. Next turn we'll do some stuff. Me too, Memphis Black. I tinkered with Asha's favor a bit. Oh, yeah, I have too. I'm our Thaler. Isn't bad. Yeah, you're right. It's a lot for three mana, but boy, it can... I mean, if you're going against a blue deck, it's just game over. Flying, first strike, vigilance. I think that's the three stats it grants. I used to play that in uh, um, Hexproof way back in, like, I don't know, 2009 or something. Okay. Feels like something's going to happen this turn. <laughs> Either us or, or them. We shall see. Considering letting that priest go if it gets, like, galvanic blasted so we can bring it back even bigger. Sometimes it feels like I'm wasting benevolent bodyguards if I do it that way, you know? Realistically, I'll probably run into the novice and then they'll bolt in response. I, depending on what we draw here, hmm, it's not that great. The old armor sometimes can feel really naked if uh, you, you get a hand like this where it's just, there's not much going on here, so it's just kind of a first strike bonus push. We've got them for a reason. Let's use them. Bring this in. Cool. And... I'm just going to come in with the with the priest here. <laughs> Nick gets the see-through armor, that's right. Okay, looks like he's got the Gal Blast plan. We'll get rid of one inspector. Actually, I could... <laughs> All right, so that's not going to work. 
Okay. So first strike happens. Priest takes four. And we get a free lightning bolt out of the deal. Bum -ba -dum. Well, we haven't seen too much stuff going down, so let's bring this out in case we top deck all that glitters. A lot of players, you know, just don't see infect too much, so it's forgivable. But first strike infect and combat gets really like, what the hell's happening? Man. We're going to lose our first strike, darn it. Yeah, I had Return Triumphant in this for a while. Do I save it? I think I do. Let's save it. I'll just call white here. Bye-bye, armor. Crag gaining life that they don't need. Hicker Claw feels pretty good in this matchup. Skyfisher showing up. Bringing back the journey. All right, so we're going to need, uh, this is Boros. And uh, what is that spell from my sideboard? View sideboard. Revoke. That's right. I'm just making a little note here. All right. Well, that feels pretty special. Two, three, can't do that. Hmm. Now do we just sit on it? I think we just attack here. We'll come in with both these guys. Benevolent Blessing standing by. I get to cut down the inspector. Feeling very underwhelming right now as far as our firepower goes. That can happen. I think we just sit back on Blessing, wait for the Gal Blast to show up. Yeah, let's do that. Our poor Crawling Chorus isn't getting much work done, but now it can swing thanks to the Inspector being a 0-1. Don't really want to use a blessing on the priests if they journey again, which is very likely given that they only have two cards in their hand. Hmm. Yeah, I had I had a angelic renewal in here too for the same reasoning. It's one of those winning more cards when when it did pump the enchantments. I uh, definitely had the lead already. Huh. Opting not to. Play the journey. I still would if I was them, but whatever. Icor instead of Ick. All right. One red showing up. Yeah, I don't want to put pro white on really anything. Maybe the toxin, dude. That'd be pretty funny, huh? Just throw it on there. Actually, if I'm going to throw it on anything, it might be this dude, given the uh, speed here. Let me do that EOT here. Oh, do I really want to do that? If you put it on this, that'd be funny as hell. Just be like, pro white, attack. Hmm. Yeah, let's do it. This poor guy hasn't been doing anything. Let's call white. I'll just keep getting in a little steady action here. Hiya. Here we go. Hello, governor. Hiya. Coming on through. What you gonna do? We'll see how this block goes. <laughs> With nothing, we still get through. All right. Three relics coming in. And because we have artifact uh, action here with this when it dies, we're pretty pretty good on that. As far as like, getting around the uh, prismatic strands, I should have prefaced that first. Sorry about that. Bring that out. Bring that out. Now one more card. What shall we do? I'm going to lose a glitter, believe it or not. I'm fond of doing that. Uh, I know I'm a, kind of a deck building purist. Try to fit in four of something. Otherwise, you got to question its relevance, especially when you have a low curve like this. But unless it's green, I think three glitters might be the right call. Yeah. 
had a bone splitter, a single solitary bone splitter in this for a while, but I was just uh, having a nice libation about four nights ago, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to try this out, and I was pleasantly surprised. Really kept me in a lot of games and did that little bit of extra damage early that really meant the difference of shutting the door on turn four or five. Protection for days, creatures for days, and an early bodyguard. We like this hand. We'll keep. No sideboard yet, but we'll be all right. Probably got a breath weapon or three in their sideboard that they brought in for us. But I'm a little worried because we already saw Journey, which means that they are diversifying their defense, which is a very smart thing to do. People tend to, like me, want to be efficient, and it's like, well, if they don't have any creatures out, I can just bolt them or throw the gal blast at their head. And it's like, that's very true. But uh, all of a sudden, something gets protection from red. You don't want your whole game to cascade into defeat. Pretty obvious second play here. We'll just drop the Leonin and pass. And a commission. I really like seeing that. Might just let this go to commission it back even further. Hmm. All right. We'll attempt to save it. We'll call red. Make them have it, right? Yeah, it was a pretty impressive rainfall last night. They always exaggerate here, and so I was kind of like, we'll see, but from about midnight to 6 a.m., it was coming down in buckets, like just really steady, heavy, you know, steady and heavy. It's usually just a little blast and then it sprinkles and everybody talks about hillsides coming down because everything's built in such a hurry in LA. <laughs> Limbus action already showing up. Okay. The priest. I love the priest. Do I just want to run into something here and trade? I'll we'll keep our options open. That, that's not the best trade. We'll chill out here, regroup. If anything dies, we've got recommission back up. Got, especially if we draw another land, it's going to be awesome. So we can uh, recommission and then blessing it. Maybe even calling white if it's the priest. It takes a ways, but I even considered losing bodyguard and trying like something like chow mano's blessing but that creature is a big thing and it's kind of like uh fairy macabre in that once the bodyguard's out you can't outside of a mirror shell crab which nobody plays not really going to be stopping its uh ability to be able to counter stuff so it feels uncounterable is what i mean yep yeah, messed around with apostle's blessing too okay bye bye leonin I see the removal of choices festivities. Doesn't mean they don't have breath weapon. Just have it right behind that. So let's hope for a land here. All right, not quite what I wanted. Hmm. Uh, this is that clunky draw where I kind of want to play blessing so that I've I've got um, protection from my priest here. Feeling really naked right now. So if I go for a blessing right now and they've got Gal Blast, I'm just kind of out of turn. Hmm. I'm gonna i I'm gonna let's see if they've got it. I don't want to grab the bodyguard. I want to grab the Leon and get a 3-2 out of the deal so that, that inspector can't just keep staring us down. Yeah, the problem is. I can't wait through my whole turn unless they want to gal blast now. It just feels really underwhelming right here. And I have. Hmm. I'm going to pull the trigger on this. 
All right. Well, they've clicked right through, so they must not have any removal. So we were safe for another festivities. Sky Fisher probably grabbing the synthesizer or the inspector. Yep, there we go. Lightning bolt shows up. Bad news for our lost Leonin. It's going to be very lost. Boop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop. And for the second time, the Dim <laughs> the Leonin is in the graveyard. I'm trying to find my slippers without looking on the ground because my feet were too warm earlier and I kicked them off and now I'm getting cold. I did it. My feet are ambidextrous. Meaning I got them in the wrong shoe. Woo. Tragic slippers. <laughs> that was fast, Nimchinsky. Well done. <laughs> All right. Well, there's not much to hit with this, is there? Now we don't have to fear Journey too much. Ah, oh, man, this feels just so... I just need to hit a damn land. Let me see here. Tekken doesn't do much. But it might draw out something and I can at least kill the stats on the Skyfisher here. If they want to do that. Okay. Well, we don't have to worry about Galblast here. I think we play the Mur here. Not... Galblast would really... Oh, they need a lot of help to get there. They've only got one artifact right now, so... I feel okay here. So, like, if a journey shows up, we can revoke it. I wish it was a sorcery. Unfortunately, it ain't. <laughs> yeah, and that, my kids giggled when they were like a lot younger. I had just sandals, and in the eighties, we always called them thongs, and now it's just like the, you know, lingerie or whatever. And they kind of giggled, and I was like, "What? That's what they were called for like a hundred years." <laughs> Alpine Meadow showing up here. Can we please get a land? Okay. I'm going to be careful of their life here. Not feeling all that great. Got another festivities. What's happening here? Nope. That's right, sorcery. For some reason, I thought it was an instant. Ooh, that's really good. Hmm. That's a lot less likely to get killed. I want that to block. Not quite sure what the right call here is. Um, I think I'll go here. We haven't infected them yet? This sucks. All right. Attack. Getting in for three, hopefully. Alrighty, that gives us a few more turns. Very underwhelming. I mean, at least infected them now. I got like a Skyfisher for the Skyfisher. That would be frustrating. I'm going to drop that other one. Don't try this at home, kids. I have just, these are my spidey senses tingling. I don't think they've got a festivities. They would have played it. They might draw into one. This might be where they do it. Yeah. Option of getting two for one here, but I, I, I'm i kind of doing this so that they don't attack me full out. Four is almost half our life right now, and I kind of want them to live a little fearful. So if we can if we can just untap, that blessing is just going to be MVP. Ah, oh, there it is. They got it. All right. I wonder if they just drew it or if it was off of that uh, cracked clue. Again, what's the chance that we eventually get another Teferi using his ability to do something mundane? 
yeah, grocery store shopping. The chance is very low. I sh uh, that's right. I was supposed to. I was. I meant to um, take some of the new abilities from the new set and uh, encapsulate them into a little commercial break. So now they're they're making them like thirty minutes long, and I gotta go in there and download the whole thing, pull it out, edit the clip. You know. Okay, this is getting close, folks. Revoke's not feeling all that great here. Oh man, can we get a solid footing? No, we do get that though, so that feels a little bit better. All right, we'll play this. Probably dead this next turn. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they block with Skyfisher. Attack for two, probably bolt us. I'll sit back. I think we've lost this one. That shouldn't sound too morose. It's the first one of the day. I gotta make sure to write the W down for the first one. Bye bye, Skyfisher. Yeah, strands might be better than revoke. Just Gosh, if they tie up something and, uh, yeah, I think you're right there. Thank you for that, Dreamer. There's so many variants of uh, Boros these days. It's it's nice to see. I remember back when the original Boros Kitty was being made, and that was why it was being made. Is So we were just like, there's got to be a color combination that works here. Same is said for Gruel these days. Journey to nowhere. There we go. Well, we'll be able to live through one of those anyway via blessing. Where is it? Where is it going? Lemboss instead. Okay. Yeah, this provoke in this matchup's feeling really underwhelming. That was a I mean I have plenty of targets, but I don't want to be taking my turn doing it. Journey. Just staring us down, huh? Look at that. Oh, they must have the kill here. Or they, they have prismatic themselves. That's probably what's happening. Yeah, this is a prismatic strands play. Nope. We just get Gal Blast to death. All right. Game three. Boop. Bonk. Bye bye, pseudo tech. Where did it go? Where did it go? Revoke. We will revoke the revoke. We'll bring in the strands. I think I'm good with that. Just hope they don't have too many journeys. Pow. I know it's the flavor of the year, the glitters, but sometimes I feel like I could just put in more Sentinel's eyes, lower my curve even more. But then, like, the more you do that, then you're like, oh, man, if I had a glitter here, this would be huge. But the, the only reason it would be huge is because you went all in with the other plan. Yeah. Pretty good. We're really dead meat to festivities, but uh, we'll keep this. I'm going to lean on the uh, Icker Claw here just because it can run over the top of all their creatures. Tired of this coffee flavor, so I'm gonna switch to Celsius. Yeah, I wasn't able to play Monday night at Legion, so if you went there hoping to see me or my son, I apologize. And it's not gonna happen in the near future. I've got a pretty steady new uh, pickleball get together on Monday night, so unless they change their hours, I don't know if I'm gonna be really making it too much. But it was nice to see that it fired. I was feeling kind of guilty, like, oh my gosh, if I don't show up, and then it, that's the reason it doesn't fire, because we had just enough that first night. And my son and I took one, too. But I guess they had enough. So now I'm kind of like, wow, man, if I would have made it, would there have been like 12 or 20 people there? Who knows? Tell you the truth, though, I'm, I've really got a thing against crowds, and that store gets pretty crowded, and... It's not the most comfortable environment for me to play in. It's very festive for everyone else. For me, I'm just like, yeah, feeling hot and bothered. If you do ever see me in an event, I'll always be off in a corner or where there's just a natural edge to the crowd. I just can't stand being swallowed up in humanity. 
it's that way with concerts. I always have to be like against the edge of something or on the far corner of a bleacher or something. All right. Well, this doesn't do too much other than a one for one here. I'll just call red. <laughs> Deluxe again. Yeah, there's so many card games that kind of fit that mold now. Grotto, really like seeing this here. I mean, I'd much rather it not be a land, but I can prevent another land from happening. That's pretty good. We'll say top, even though it's slow as a nightmare here. <sighs> Likelihood they have another festivities. I think I have to chance it because we know what we're drawing next, which is strands. And I can sit behind it. I'm going to play dangerous. I'll play the Leonin. Make sure our lands are out. There we go. Real big time dead meat. If they do have another festivities here. They're taking too long. They would have played it. Yeah, I, there's a little bit of that too, Nimchimsky. It's probably happening, but like I, I feel my pulse rise. I get kind of the sweats is a little too strong a word, but I do feel my temperature goes way up. Definitely don't play my best. Been that way for a long time, but boy, every few years it gets like doubled and something about aging makes it worse. I don't know what that's all about. I'm considering just running right through that thing. I got the power to do it, don't we? I'll just do that. This way our Leonin can play Prismatic Strands drawback, or, or fallback, I should say. I keep meaning to start editing with my laptop with all its amazing stats and power and RAM and everything else, but I, uh, I keep leaning on my Mac. Old habits die hard. Plus, I like having double monitors and huge stuff. I'll have to completely redesign everything if I'm going to edit on one small window, but be good for me. Good little experiment. Journey to nowhere. Showing up. Not much we can do about this. I hope they take the Leonin, actually. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye, Burr. If we keep drawing lands, this is going to get away from us real quick. <laughs> Mine's Dev. Nice one. Refashing. Oh, come on, list. I've got 18. Don't, two, four, six, seven already. Almost halfway through our lands. And here we are. We have protection from days. Bodyguard's already in the yard. We have protection in our hand, but not against journeys. Not yet. There's about eight ways to do that with this list. All right, I guess they're going to start attacking now. I used to run, um, what was it, Nimbus Wings in this. Gets like plus one, plus two on flying. Sometimes I wonder if that's... Even better than glitters in this style of list, but gosh darn it. Well, this is a scenario where we're drawing lands and they're drawing like the best cards against us. Journey's definitely one of them. Now we want to revoke existence back. <laughs> and I know there's the angelic wings does the same thing, but it draws you a card and doesn't provide stat bumps. As you can see right there, a 3-3 three, three, uh, Leonin flying is way better than a you know 2-1 flyer and draw a card in this style of list. That's why I always favor that. If I was tight on mana, I might consider strands in this just so it sits in the yard and I can out-tempo them, but not in this case. That's the one. Majority of the time I would say that's usually, the gift is probably correct, but in an infect style shell, you can get any stat bumps, especially on the defensive side, you go for it. 
All right. Well, if we draw any more lands, let me know. Bring up Leonin and see if they have journey number three. <laughs> be frustrating if they do. At this stage, it's probably another end of the festivities. All right. Holy strength. Yeah, go super old school. Glaring Aegis is, Aegis is pretty awesome. Um, Zealot's Conviction is one that I considered. Double Cleave, Apostle's Blessing, and Sentinel's Eyes. Those are like the top performers. So save yourself a lot of hours of searching. Mark this video there and uh, rewatch later if you want to try those. Again, we're not going to have a show next week. Everybody, a little reminder. Boop -a -doo, looking for the festivities. Okay. Yeah, it's a holy cow. That was a pretty good, good little card. I think I'm going to hold on that strands. Style of list, a lot of times they'll kind of dump all their burn on like the last turn and catch them a little off there. Boy, oh boy. Where is our stuff? We need enchantments. Got your little in the festivities. You better play it now. That's at least what my board is saying. We have eight first strike spells. We need to draw one. The rain has stopped. Got about a four hour window between now and pickleball practice. Hopefully, the courts will be dry enough. Actually, the guy that. Um, Made the propaganda song, Animaltronics. They're coming by to visit today. I haven't seen them in over a year. That'll be pretty cool. Getting close to using that strands on just the hawks here. Detective. Looks like we're going to be going into the first break one and one. The blockers are set. The bodyguard's here. Yikes. Hmm. That puts us at six. Two more to go. We'll call red. Sure glad in the festivities is a sorcery. Wow. Is that right about that? All right. I'll call red. We've lost this game, guys. Yep. There's that end of turn, huge turn crackdown I was talking about. Red. Just hoard everything and then go for it. Boop. We'll have some fun here. Hiya! Call white. <laughs> we'll get you for four. Guaranteed, baby. Woo! Can we survive this turn? Next fit up will be courtesy of the Pawn Stars. If you haven't seen it, stick around. It's very cool. Nobody's seen it, my version of it. It's the first time I'm playing it. I, I edited it like six weeks ago. Just forgot to put it in. Galvanic Blast. We're dead. Concede. All right, guys. I'll be back right after this. Enjoy. How you doing? Good. How you doing? You know what that is? Um, a beta Magic the Gathering starter deck? Yes, it wow. is. Wow. I'm kind of in awe right now. This is something that you don't see every day, if ever. 
I mean, Magic the Gathering is such a popular game. It just continues and continues to grow, especially over the last few years. Now, Magic the Gathering has a bazillion cards, but of course, when this deck came out, they didn't have very many cards. It was just the first set. So this is beta, right? It would have been the second printing? Yes. If I'm not mistaken, this is just a pre-made deck ready to play the game. What I know about it is when you open them, there's pretty much commons, uncommons, and rare cards, and there's two rare cards inside of it. Okay. That's really the, the mystique of a sealed deck like this, is you don't know what's inside, and that has a lot of value in itself. So how did you get this deck? I've been buying them online when they come available, because there's not too many of them. When I open them up, I never get really valuable rares, and I just I get disappointed. I'm kind of cutting my losses here. Okay, I mean, Magic is one of those games where some of the cards are very expensive and you need them to play your deck, but you also want them for your collection. So right. you have players and collectors battling for the same cards. Not like in other games like Pokemon that I play where the playable cards are usually fairly cheap yeah. and the ones that people want to collect are usually the expensive ones. How much are you looking to get for this deck? I'd like to get 40000 for it. I would like to have um, my CGC card expert come over and take a look at it. So, this is supposedly a, a beta Magic the Gathering deck. You were telling me that it was something early and great from Magic. I mean, this is an important piece of Magic history right here. These yeah. beta decks are hard to come by. I mean, they're literally only in print for about a month. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that dreams are made of in Magic the Gathering. Mind if I take a look at it? Of course. Beta Magic the Gathering deck, sealed. I mean, just the condition looks pretty good. Um, with sealed product like this, I always am nervous. I'm not going to lie. I mean, that's always the gamble with these decks, Chum, is that it's randomized. So you get 60 cards random, you get two rares, 13 uncommons, and then 45 commons. You know, I think the best bet here is buying it to open it. And that way, you have a guarantee when you open it that if it's fake, you don't buy it. I'll give you 25000 for it. I'll take all the risks. If there's a Black Lotus in there, I will split it with you. I think I'll, I'll upset that. We ready to open this? I'm a little nervous, but yes. Okay, well, once we pop the plastic, there's no going back. So here we go. Okay, so we got our, our two rares right here. So there's one there and one here. The print run for rares is only 1,100 cards each. Right here, should we just go right after the rares? Let's go right for the rares, Matt. I okay. can't take the suspense anymore. Well, same time? All right, same time. Same time, let's see. Two at a time. Oh, recall! Oh, oh my oh, god, power oh, nine. Oh, 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 oh wow. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Wow, that's a piece of power, Chum. That's I one mean, of the top three pulls, right? Yeah, I mean, that's like one of the Halo cards you can pull. It would be worth probably $150,000. Hallelujah. Congratulations. What a, card. a tough pill for you to swallow. It stings. But that's $25,000 in your pocket. And a lot more in yours, but I'm glad <laughs> I got to see it. All right, Congratulations. All right, this is a little exciting for me. I need to go get some water. Uh, I'll do this leaving. All right, you sleeve these up, I'll get us some water. Perfect. And we're back. Boy, that guy sure looked crestfallen. We've double mulliganed here. Hey, yeah, yeah. Stuff's gonna die. We gotta probably do this, even though these are great in pairs, but ugh. Had a no lander while I was off air. You made the whitelist vid, yes, finally. I know it took long enough. Blues blue should be a little bit faster now that I've got kind of the template set up. Blue's a lot more obvious as far as what goes. Come on, land. Hmm. Let's get a land here. Well, the first game the deck showed up, that second and third game of the last round was like, bleh. We did win the first one, but. What do we got here? Red. Dead. They might regret that. Just give me a land. I'll play a naked Murr, no problem. 
Shoot. Ah, worst case scenario. Yeah, it did. Down, I I was the one that spoiled that my step throw because I, I was like, who the hell? I, I looked up and I, I saw this little weird um, notch in the uh, text box. And I was like, ah, big deal. And I, it was such a visual red herring that I didn't look at the stats. And I'm like, never seen that before in my life. But I guess Arena had some new version of it. So that one's got the right build. And I know you guys like the uh, mistakes, just like how I mispronounced Phyresis back in the day. And so I left that one up too. Fun to laugh at. But yeah, I was just like, are you kidding me? Oh, come on. Double miss land drop. Let's go. This would be a bad play if I kept a one lander, but I had to double mulligan. At some point, you have to stop the bleeding and roll the dice. Yeah, this might be a commission list. This is another. Uh, here we go. We have no problem sending this out into the world naked because we got recommission right behind it. Hmm. Even the priests aren't feeling too safe. Opponents on a gal blast build. Cool. These are better than at my head for right now. I remembered that Pawn Stars wrong. I thought they were going to split any Power 9, but they just made the deal for just the Lotus. I was like, ugh. So much life gain that isn't needed. <laughs> Might be here. If I draw a land, I'll I'll slow roll the Priest just so it can be a 2-5 in, in reality. and Maybe I can... Uh, Steal the game away. Land. Good. All right. I'm just dropping Priest. They got a Gal Blast. That's cool because we've got Recommission right behind it. And if we top deck another land with Blessing back up, that'll feel pretty good. This is when you almost hope for a Gal Blast. Because we, if that's the case, we've avoided 11 damage. I guess they don't have it. Yeah, I'm so not into Arena. I, I was completely oblivious to that Mind Step Throw, about them having different versions. And I went to, like, the high-res image site, typed in Don Bringer Cleric, downloaded it, and didn't think much of it. I'm just such a visual person. I just was like, you know, I see the art. I'm like, it matches. Good to go. Hmm. Okay, they got a glitter plan. We got about two turns. More like one. Now this time we're definitely, this build looks like we're gonna wanna bring in the thing. Or maybe it's more of a strands build again. We just buy our time with that, who knows. I was really kinda hoping that would work out. Hmm. Don't have much time here. Um, I don't think we can get there. And we don't have an answer, but let's just let's just pack this up. I can't I can't well if I if I top deck the glitters next turn and they have no burn, that's an out. So let's let's assume for that. We'll bring this out. I don't want a blessing it in case we top deck you know what. So I'll bring out the uh, recommission on the on the mur here. We'll just attack. I thought we were gonna attack. That was weird. Why didn't it go through? Doesn't have summoning sickness. That was weird. Well, there goes that plan. Now they can just block it. Actually, no, I could, um, no, that wouldn't work either. Got to pull, got to pull that. Yeah, we've lost. Even if that block didn't happen, did we draw a land? Nope. Okay. Well, this is a rough one. We'll get rid of the solid footing plan. And the glitter. I think we're just going to play the strands against this. I could bring in Revoke. Hope to have it when I got it, but I'd rather two, two for one it with the uh, prismatic plan here. Let's go. Yes, 60 cards starts feeling very uh, constrained when you see all the options you have to play white. I mean, we've done it over the years. We've played Nimbus Wings. We've played 
uh, Art, uh, Cloak of the Bat. We played. Uh, yeah, I want to play first. Okay, we've got a decent hand. Tempted to keep this because of here. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this. We have so much protection. If something goes out, I can maybe keep it alive. I just want options, and mulliganing is maddening in this game. So we'll bring this here. See what we're gonna see. Hopefully, it's a uh, creature. It is not. We need lands and creatures. I'm gonna put that on the bottom. Yep. Dreamer Stango sent in a pretty spicy gutter snipe list with a complete Bible on how to play it and propaganda behind it. It's pretty cool. Cool, cool. One more land. And we're in okay shape. Let's just draw land here. We've paid our dues via the grotto. I had four grottos in this at one point. I like them better than Secluded Step in this style of build. <laughs> he had, he had the, the real word behind it. True propaganda. It's hard. For, I have to concentrate when I say that because I say propaganda so much more often. All right. Well, bye-bye, bodyguard. Hopefully they use a burn spell on this. Mm-hmm. Here's a healing salve. Yeah, these two Boros matchups have been really frustrating. I've been doing pretty good against these style of lists, but just having some real clunky draws now that we're live on air. Been playing it all week, and uh, the course usually comes out. Never seems to hiccup like it has today, but... Trying to pull ahead. We're one and one right now. Synthesizer coming back. Revealing another inspector. There we go. Yeah, that's what I kind of ran into in Chimsky. It's like, and you keep adding stuff, and, and then we can go here, and then, and then it's turning into this list. <laughs> It'll probably be a pretty janky version. We'll see. Well, that's a creature. Be nice if I drew the most probable thing in the deck, which is a land. Be complaining even more if the Crystal Grotto didn't show up. Come on, Gal Blast it. That way I can at least recommission it. I don't know if that would be worth it or not, but Umbras are pretty cool because we haven't seen any journeys from this Boros player yet. Doesn't mean they don't have them. All right. I'm trying to get their mana right. Pretty sure here. Well, I hope that airplane's okay. There's a little prop plane in the distance. Sounds like it's under duress. All the creatures. Huh. We know they're not out of burn. Hmm. Strange. Take too much more damage. We're going to have to start playing defensively on strands here. All right, Fangraph. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, I could go double Umbra. That might be kind of cool. I'd rather just get out the priest. Ay, ay, ay. Only one time, yep. Oh, this is this is just really clunky here. So if I play out the priest, they gal blast it, attack. Take seven. And I can recommission it, maybe have a blessing back up, and then I'm only getting attacked with the Glint Hawk. I think that's the line. Let's, let's attack first, because I'm not gonna be blocking. Maybe they've never read it or Clomer before and they'll actually block. <laughs> Said nope. Might even consider blocking the uh, Seeker. Just 
prevent the damage, instigate a gal blast. It, obviously, they'd probably do it first for the little life bonus, but maybe they realize life doesn't matter in this matchup. There's a life land shows up. Game two. I stay up on this. Four rolls. It'll. One game one against the last Boros, but not this one. Pop, pop. Clint Hawk. I'm going to shut the door real quick. I got the answer. Just not enough lands. Remember about two years back, I had a, like a 22 land version. And sometimes I wonder because, you know, I had three of these at the time and that was part of the package. And then cycle off the other secluded steps. All this to say I'm still not quite sure what the optimal build of this darn thing is. Come on, Galblast. Clear it from the books. Well, at this stage, I'm just going to block that seeker just to stay alive here. I'll neuter it, kill our dude. And... Yeah, we're dead to either Galblast or the Swing here, and we don't have a white creature to do anything about it. So off to the next round. Boop. We're 1-2. It's going to roll right through. Hopefully we don't see another Boros matchup. That was a little tedious. Similar. If I was to start cutting stuff at this stage of the build, I'm, I'm seriously thinking... You know, if you do add lands, though, this, this won't feel as much of a liability. Just, it, it's so, fr it's very frustrating. I mean, I, I say this like every other show, but it's just, I have played this since like Monday, steadily, about two hours a night. And I've hiccuped here and there, but nowhere, <laughs> nothing like this. Just screwed on lands, screwed on lands, screwed on creatures. It's like we got 20 creatures now, courtesy of this, technically 24. It seems to have been the answer, but uh, not so much here. Hmm. So what was that one? I wanted to bring up, um, yeah, Conviction. Zealot's Conviction is a pretty cool card. I considered running, oops, of course. Can't wait two seconds. It's got a, yeah. Creature gets 1-1, one, one, flash. They got three or more poison. It gets first strike and another 1-1. One, one. And consider that over the, here's, here, this is the kind of hand I've been getting all week. Just, just an honest two land. Here's some creatures. Here's some protection. Here's some problems. The last two games have been very frustrating. Some more squire so far. <laughs> all right, let's. Hope to not see any sort of Boros just for the sake of a, a new matchup, right? Let's see a forest or an island or something. All right, I'll take it. We never attack with a team usually. If we do, we're winning. I don't think the Eagle's a good call. I definitely don't want to trip it up with the Haunted Fen Graph. Bodyguard sometimes, macabre most of the time. All right. Boy, I really wish that Benevolent Blessing was actually a recommission at this stage of the game. Hey, that helps, but to what end? Uh, do I slow roll this or just pull it off? I'm going to just throw this out there. Bloop, attack. Really hoping for a land drop here. Most probable way we can uh, play uh, probably Umbra and then defend it with Blessing. People try to get you to use your stuff on your turn, and that's when this deck gets really nasty. All right, so we'll, we'll do that plan here. Let's play Umbra. Oh, wow, they just clicked right through that. Um, all right, now I'm going to change the plan here. I'm going to play Bodyguard. And then, because uh, I, I felt them auto yield there, so I'm, I'm going to go all in on this here. Got the Umbra up, and we've got a bodyguard out. 
Now they're at seven infect. Any critter, I can just trip the bodyguard and go for it, or we got the blessing in hand. Now, tithing blade is usually the norm here, but with the crawling chorus there, they they need to play it three times, and then we'd still have our infect critter. This is the game state that this deck loves. You get to this position, it's like wee. It's funny when people don't see the answer here. Let's do this. We'll just play this here, call blue. Come on over. It lacks the punching power of original effect, but it's it has a very consistent, steady power. Alrighty. Uh, what would we call this, Grixis? Or quite a few artifact lands. I'm not sure if I want to spend turn two getting rid of those. Or if we just roll it back. I'm not sure. Uh, I think I'm just going to roll this back. Get a little more information on the deck. You know, it's turn two. I want to be playing creatures and, and just not really picking on their lands. This is... Um, hmm... Yeah, I think I'm just going to roll this back. Let's go. hi -ya. Okay. Glad I did that. Keep this. Bloop. Be nice to have a crawling chorus. I'm pretty sure they're playing a tithing blade build. Candy Trail does absolutely nothing for them on this matchup. Except for the scry, so I guess it does do something. Normally, everybody's packing in life gain where they can put it, which is what makes this build so much fun to play. Just in case we get an early glitters, I'll lead off with the den. Bodyguards up, Iker claws out. Put an umbra on it, and run for the fences. I've never liked Gear Seeker Serpent. I mean, it's much better than Quicksilver Behemoth, which used to be the norm. That's a neat, interesting uh, take there. I know Mindstab Thrill. I know Tesla, the the one that the cars are named after, would would agree there. Um, they. Uh, he was obsessed with the number three. I would always invent things in threes or use three parts instead of four and, and such. So, yeah, pretty trippy. So anyway, as I was saying, Zealot's Conviction is an interesting call. I considered playing this even over, um, what do you call that glitters just for that. I just love Flash in this style of list. And I don't know, it just seemed like, oh, maybe this will just get there and there'll be more options, but... Fun card to mess about. This. All right. See, all I had to do was complain. We're starting to get okay hands here. I mean, we only have one creature, but we've got a recommission, so it's like two. We'll keep this. So even a Priest of Norn that's a 2-5 first strike can block a 5-5 five five and live. So it'll put the infect counters on, and the thing comes up at 3-3 at the end of combat, and then you're free sailing. What is this? Hey, it's something with green in it. Yay! Yeah, me, me too, Mind Step. Stats are nice, but if the creature just keeps getting blocked, that's a whole other deal. really like seeing the chorus here. It's another thing. You know when you're brewing and you try out a new card like I just did with Crawling Chorus around Monday or Tuesday? And every time you draw it, you're like, you get kind of happy. That's a good sign. Keep going down that route. Problem is, when I draw all the glitters, I often look at the board and I'm a bit like, eh, it's not that great right now, or it's a big liability right now. So I'm, st I'm really starting to think this isn't a glitters deck. It's silly as that is to say. Oh, 
<laughs> what's up england wrangler personally that's the kind of outside the box genius brewing i've come to cherish from your channel wow thank you so much i'm not quite sure what it was i said that made you prompt that but i'll try to do more of it thank you sir all right bodyguard not bad i'll take it we'll, we'll play the bodyguard again i'm not going to equip anything other than a real infect creature this toxic creature is an interloper in the universe of infect what do we have here Ooh, spice okay slivers this is definitely a prismatic strands it's a common thing i respect any deck with a quick sliver in it i just i think that's a hell of a card so scary to attack into Considering blocking this, <laughs> I might. Yeah, this one looks like it might be three colors. Four cards under the reveal card zone. Yep, we're looking at a rainbow slivers list. And I don't think there's many. I guess there's the one, two sliver that, that's a bit respectable, but let's bring out our priest. Now I'm feeling nice and good. I get a priest out, I'm feeling good. We'll attack with a course. Probably should have attacked first with untapped lands so that they're less likely to drop a... Uh, is this a sinew? Yeah, or a plated. That's the one I was afraid of. All right. I sure wish this had a wither damage. Oh, well. We don't have to worry about blades here. And we get to see the thing. It's got a pretty good quote, if I'm not mistaken. We need not be swift. We are inexorable. Good word. Oh, I see, Penguin Ringer. Thank you for the uh, clarity there. Yeah, if you only knew, even my jankiest brews, there is a lot of hours behind the scenes, and a lot of it's compiled, right? Like, it's only five colors of magic, so a lot of times I've, I'll make, like, a list. I recommend you do the same. Start a new file. Just call it you know, underscore good white cards or something and just put them all in there so that when you're looking through or, you know, on the edge, like this, this is close to being a really great card. It might need some help. And then a couple sets come out later and then you, you don't have to go for a two or three hour search. You just, you got it. Yeah. Longbow is a nice, nice call. I'm not too worried about, I, th I think I can get through. I think I can punch through. Oh, man, that, that other one feels really good. All right, let me do an Umbra on this. Let me do an Umbra here. Through armor. I'm just going to make this my thrashing stick. Anything that bumps into this is going to die. Now, Journey would really suck. <laughs> I lose four cards, including the bodyguard. I don't know if that would even be worth it because I've got another priest in the hand. They're taking six. That's a very scary... Uh, maybe they do have a journey here. They're like, oh, crap, I can't crack back. I wish white had like a deadly dispute effect so I could get rid of that token and start drawing some cards, but... It wouldn't be very white if it did, right? Yeah, Mass Vandal. I'm not too worried about one-for-one one answers. There we go. Things are getting big. I should be uh, attempting to play some good magic here. Boop, 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 boop. All right. Big old team. Hopefully they're not reading the might token. I can't block with that thing. If these were true infect creatures, that would be such a broken card because you just block and still do wither damage. Art is sure pretty cool and spooky, though. I dig it. Boink. Here we go with this. They're playing bodyguards, too. Good for them. Mine are the original judgment with the cool off-white. That's right. Thank you for that warning, Nimchimsky. That is true. Wish bodyguard could attack enchantments. That'd be pretty cool. All right, at this stage, the flash and the lord are a bit more of a problem, aren't they? Hmm. 
Now is when recommission can be fun because I can call. Uh, I'm not going to call white, obviously, but I can call green on it if I need to. I think I'm just going to chill out and attack. I've got a vandal response. I can protect it with bodyguard. I'm going to get their numbers down, which is unlikely. All right, there's that. If I call white, I can really turn off those shenanigans. That was, that was a dangerous move there. If I call white, everything falls off. Easy now. Okay, cool. Those instant shenanigans are over with. Alrighty. Let's pull the Lord first. I think I want to go like this. No. I'll do this. Say okay. We'll call green here. Green. Yo. And we could bring back bodyguard, but I can also do that next turn. So let's do that. Bloop. It's another one. All right. Lord down. I want to get rid of their white creatures so that I can alpha strike calling green. Of course, if apostles, I mean, if a benevolent blessing shows up, I'll be free to go. But now they've got the vandal play if they want it. It'd be so brutal if benevolent bodyguard could target my priest and be like, "You're naked." <laughs> Not good. Hmm. Can I just attack again? I think I do. I've got Umbras on this, so I'm not too worried about losing that. I'd rather than think I have two creatures out. And I'm fine bringing back a, a, a priest at a 2 5 blockade here. Yeah, let me just attack here. I'll do that. Keep two mystery cards back. Again, we're going to want to focus on that plated sliver. Okay, now I got two targets. That's frustrating. Hmm. Yeah, Benevolent Blessing is such a good card. I use it on defense a lot, like what you were just suggesting, Line Stab. Or excuse me, Dreamer Stango. You sit there and they all that glitters something, you're like, Pro White. Of course it gives them almost an infinite blocker against you, but Okay. Well look at that, huh? Well, I said I'm gonna pick on white, I'm gonna stick to it. We'll do that. This is a really good block by our opponent. They've got another bodyguard right behind this. We've killed one of these. So we know half of their hand. And bye-bye priest. Back he comes, stronger than ever. Click through. Let's bring him back. This is the optimal recommission target at 2-5. Nothing to sneeze at. Not bad for spending two mana to get a 2-5 Vigilance Infect. That's nuts. That is some super value. Okay. The lords are aplenty. Man, oh man, do we need some uh, prismatic strands in our lives. The hunter is provoked. That's right. First strike's a thing. But they just keep building up. This is getting 
Scary. Oh, I like that. Now, which one do I put it on, right? I'm going to diversify here because I don't want him to do that bodyguard trick. I want this to be a quite the decision. I don't think I have to do the math. They go all out on this one. They might be able to cap it off, but so I'll attack with everything. All right. The match. All right. I'm going to give you guys one more because we've had two, two runaways. Technically 3-2, but we're just going to play one more for y'all. This will be the last one. Again, next week, there will be no show. I will be in the Washington State area, northwest of the states. I'm going to head out to Mock's Boarding House, show the fam, and get in maybe a game of Catan or something on the, in the little restaurant there. They have a great restaurant there, the Mock's Boarding House. And I ought to let Ryan know from um, oh, I, the MTG Bellingham crew. That's right. I know they've been kind of offline for quite a while, but uh, I know he's still playing. I see him in Discord every once in a while. All right. I hate when this stuff happens here. Here we go. Down with recommission. So glitters felt like a like the card it's supposed to be in that matchup. But again, that's because we had our, our infrastructure already set up. Ooh, this is so tempting to keep. If we draw into a critter, God lordy, look at the firepower. Should we keep it? Got two lands and a bodyguard. Let's keep it. <laughs> We're on the draw. We drop any creature with bodyguard back up. Uh-oh. Not the kind of... Uh, this is... I wonder if this is that same player that I met. Just because it started with this. Okay, that feels decent. We can at least block with that and take out the Foundry Street, which I will do. Change of plans. In a scenario like this, I might want to see Yicker Claw Murr here. That would be tough, right? You'd probably want to still play the bodyguard and sit back. Recommission, <laughs> okay, if you only live twice. <laughs> That is an old school avatar. Yeah, this is the list that just destroyed my uh, eight rat list. And I kept, I was very obstinate in my thinking. I was like, what is going on here? Because I can usually beat red decks. But this one with the Slitter and Foundry Street, more of an old school build. I'll block you all day long, dude. Well, I can anyway. You want to use your Slitter on that? All right. Like a Balath, you're right. Very stubborn. Okay. Hardcore glitter build here. I'm going to attack. Can't block. Be happy to trade a sledder for that. Really, really, really want one of our two drops to show up here. Yeah, talk about new card smell. All that glitters. Even here, we have, already have three next turn four artifacts out. But man, if you're playing against almost half of Magic, you know, red or black decks, just you feel so naked throwing that out there. Payoff's great, but I've tried to brew around Goblin Lookout so many times. Sacrifice a Goblin, all your creatures get the Bushwhacker. Well, it's actually better than Bushwhacker. But you got to sack a Gob to do it. Huh. Shall I block it? That'd be pretty funny, right? And they have to sacrifice their combo to get it. I'm feeling pretty reckless. I'm going to block it. <laughs> Take that. I respect sledders a lot. Maybe too much. Hey, we're at 20. We've withstood the brunt. If I put out this den, they're going to imply that I'm really heavy in the artifact plan, and they might overboard in game two, so that's why I'm going to do it. All right. Two cards in their hand. Jotun. Jotun. I forget how you say that. Somebody spell it phonetically. Oh, Dark Goblins. Ooh, look at this. 
builds like this, they might not have all that much removal because they're relying more on the uh, creature ground game. So got to keep that in mind. Come on, let me get a let me get a creature. Got a priest would be just awesome here. Nope, not to be. All right, I'll start complaining in one and a half turns. <laughs> Actually happy that we killed the uh, Sledder there. I mean, it would have died regardless because I would have blocked the Jester the next turn. And we'd be at uh, 18, but we would have used it to keep the dude alive. Feeling the full power of Spike Jester with an empty board, that's for sure. That's a Lightning Bolt to turn. Two cards in our opponent's hand. What is happening? Yay! Stuff! I'll throw a Umbra on it. I don't want to invest in an armor until an Umbra's on it. There's two cards in our opponent's hand. They might have removal, and they probably do. But the only the only reason I did that, well, I mean, it's the only thing to do right now, really. But the other reason, uh, I'm not attacking this turn, so I'm going to put another Umbra on it, just so we can withstand some sort of trick. But um, knowing that this deck is going so wide, I, they might just have, like, four bolts, or if not any. You know, maybe it's just all creatures. Looks like a reasonable poker hand. I'm not getting that. I'm sure I would if I could concentrate. <laughs> I know Edict would be so devastating here. Okay, an artifact land. Maybe they are playing the blade. Don't be tithing blade. We have so many ways around that. Okay. This is going to be a brutal turn, especially if we get like a, uh, we can one-shot them if we get a blessing. Given the shared mana. I hope I hope they run right into this Murr and think that the four is going to make a difference here. I know, crappy dispute. That's, <laughs> that's totally what it should be called. That's great. All right. I guess they know about infect and instant speed, or I mean, uh, first strike ability. Woo! Oh, this is, I'm I'm happy with this. Let's see what we're gonna draw. Make sure we don't get a land. Recommission, that's pretty good. Yeah, we can just grab bodyguard next turn and win. Top, wow, this is nuts. Uh, there are scenarios where that could, Can I get up to 10 here and just force them to have it? God, we're still dead to like an edict effect, but what are you going to do? Let's bring this out. Force them to block. We're all in, baby. Oh, man. Wish I had to raise the alarm right now. One less creature. Don't have to worry about an alpha strike. I'm glad they blocked with the goblin there because theoretically they could drop like three creatures, sacrifice one, and kind of alpha strike me there. So I'm, I'm glad that they block like that. I know it's so irrelevant after the 10, right? I like seeing no creatures and a land drop. Or pretty, they'd have to have like a triple bolt here. We haven't seen any direct damage yet. Okay. I see what they're up to. I don't think it's going to be worth bringing in a... Um... Oh, wow, that's scary. There's five. Don't think it's worth bringing in a Fairy Macabre here if they're going that route. Are you kidding me? Do they have the other one? They do. Good for them. Wow. Not like we had that one in the bag. All right, I think we're just gonna lean on strands again, everybody. Maybe a few of these guys. We'll get rid of our little cutesy stuff. I'm gonna get rid of all glitters. We're gonna, we have to win both games. So I'm gonna lean on some uh, life gain. First, let's, let's bring in strands and then we'll fill out the rest with three missionaries. I am not sure if that goblin's there just because it's a goblin or if they're playing the, uh, the plan. Might want to be, let's bring in two macabs. I don't want to see too many of them, but I also don't want to get blown out by the uh, the trick. Good early, love first strike, recommission. 
Hmm. I'll lose one of these. I'm going to lose one macabre. I would never hard cast it, but you're right. Can do it technically. Yes. Felt like we got our life stolen. We'll keep this a little flooded, but I'd rather that than screw. That's way too fast for a longbow, I think. I'm not seeing any sort of fog effects and such. So, uh, because we took out glitters, I'm gonna lead off with the planes in case they have early like artifact hate. Because remember how I overshot the uh, Den first game sort of baiting them for that that same reasoning is going to be why i play the lone missionary next because i don't want a two turn artifact damage to be uh, an option for him at least for another turn or two we'll do this we'll bring out this and we'll block all day long might be fun to just put a pro red on that just use it as our blocker for the rest of the game You said it, mine stab. Man. Screw, then flood. Screw, then flood. Same deck, didn't change a thing. Very strange. Dark goblins. Yeah, we've already kind of showcased that we will block. Yes! Oh, one of my favorite creatures. All right, let's bring out the big boy. Bloop. I'll give that pro red no matter what next turn. Well, if it's not alive, then I won't do it. But Goblin Grenade, got to respect it. <laughs> oh, my instead bringing it today. Why didn't they power that up? You're going to lose it anyway. I see that misplay all the time with uh, Mog War Marshal. In fact, the guy that beat me over the head with it was uh, making that misplay all the time. I was like, what is going on here? I'm getting a little nervous. Four cards and the Dark Dweller showing up. Sacrifice a creature. Yo's up. Doesn't even tap either. Woo! Boom, boom, boom. That's a pretty good pull. Yeah, this is going to be a better card, but I'm going to call red on this. Go right now, and everything else to stick. Attack. Ah, I wish I had solid footing was still here. I think we sided that out, didn't we? Yep. Bloop, bloop. Where'd it go? There it is. Ding, ding. Such a nice little trick, just half your life. Bloop. Surprised they didn't activate that EOT. I try a build of this where it's just almost all one drops. More, more. This is getting nerve wracking. I really want to see a prismatic strands here. This is a pretty cool little list so far. Bushwhacker. All right. There we go. Prismatic strands, please. Bodyguard. Not too bad. We'll do this here. Bring out Bodyguard right now. We've got quite a few blockers, especially since our dude doesn't tap. I'm not going to block with a mer anyway. Hiya. Here we go. Two getting in. Come on. Maybe taking out glitters was the wrong play. I probably should have taken out ethereal armor. No, I like the first strike though. Too many toys, I tell you. Too many toys. All right, here comes Bushy. It's 
Do they have another one? Woo, look at this. Deals damage to a player equal to the number of goblins you control. Zap. Now we're at 19. I think both our decks are suffering from the same thing. We 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 kind of have too many neat little toys and <laughs> what a strange play. Here's my bushwhacker. I'll do this. Maybe they're just trying to uh, burn us out, right? Okay. That scenario. I will do the following. Boop boop boop. Smack. It's at least a little bit more. Let's attack like this. Maybe should attack with the other one too, right? Sledder makes this a little bit harder. Let's go. We've got the Fengraf in play. Oh, I love this. Is he going to try to keep that alive? It's going to cost him two goblins to keep that Dark Dweller alive, but then it'll die on upkeep, so that's silly. So I'll, I'll say a pro red on this. Keep our attacker. I probably should have done that first. I hope he goes all in. Trying to, yeah, that's not going to work because weather damage. Even if he does another one. It'll kill my Murr, but I'll Fengraf it back. Or the bodyguard. We'll see. Bye-bye combo. Ah, uh, yeah, sure, Red. So again, yeah, our Mer will die, but so will this on upkeep. Hopefully they're not keeping track. Crunch. Splat. Boom. That's the turn. I think we got him. If we get the bodyguard back, they're dead next turn. There it goes. Now they're like, wait, what? I know, that's such a rip-off for two in a red. <laughs> Zap! <laughs> Take maybe one in a red. Still probably just bordering on unplayable. It's like, we'll add a whole other one. All right. W. Here's the tiebreaker. Last game for the next... We'll be back in two weeks, everybody. If you didn't catch it, we're off uh, April 6th. There will be no show next week. Hmm. Not much removal going on here. I think I'm going to get rid of a recommish. I'm going to lose the macabre plan altogether. Yeah, let's bring in three more glitters. I've got the strands. It just felt like I needed a little bit more hit power there. You know what? I'll bring in a, a missionary over a Leonin. Let's go. Pow! Yeah, I know, Dreamer Stingo. Just was I just wanted to have options there, depending on how they blocked. Early life, first strike. All right, good times. Picker Claw with the Umbra on it against a Swarm List is pretty cool. Be very cool if there was a white Trample enchantment, but you have to go into the artifact world for that. We'll keep just because of the life gain here. It's not the best hand. I got three lands, two creatures. I ain't going to start complaining now. Woo! I'm ready. This is getting better. I wonder if they're just sitting on a bunch of artifact removal. I'm like, where's where are all those lands at? Okay. There's the dude. We'll get our life back with the Billy Idol wannabe here. There we go. That's enough lands for the game. Let's not draw anymore. What is that uh, treasure card in blue? It's one in a blue. I think it can eviscerate your hand or your library of lands. What is it? Treasure or something or rather? Ah, can't quite remember. I think that was one of the only ways outside of the green storm one. To go look for a basic out of your, your deck. 
Okay, I think I have a block of no matter what here. Does he finally have some sort of direct damage? Nope. All right. I haven't seen any direct damage yet, so I'm not going to respect it till I see it. So I'm going to drop this out and throw an Umbra on it. I have played Orum's Cure in this list. If we could bring that up, I'd appreciate it. That's a hell of a card in this style of list. And in this kind of a matchup, I would really like to have it. I used to run four of those main, especially when uh, Monetary Swift Spear was everywhere. All right, this is concerning. Come on, Prismatic. I want to feel safe. I want to feel safe. You know what? Maybe we put this on here. Just so it lives. And we can trade with anything. And if they bolt it, we'll still be all right. Yeah! Sure. Well, let's go. Pop. Probably a putrid goblin block. Yep. Be happy to get rid of that thing. Because if that's off the table, I can uh, Benevolent Blessing for red and get through full power. But with a First Strike Missionary, everything's got an Umbra on it. We're feeling pretty good here. Really don't want to see an Edict here. But we've yet to see any removal. Isn't this great? We don't have to live in fear of the Foundry Street Denizen. I don't know of the card, Dreamer Stango. Can you bring it up in chat? Uh, Goblin Death Raiders? That, that doesn't ring a bell to me. Come on, Benevolent Blessing, please. I think this is the more valuable. Oh, man, Goblin War 3-1 Trim. Oh, that's right, yeah. Come on, Benevolent Blessing for the win. Benevolent Blessing. Three, two, hoi. Ah, shoot. Oh, well, things get a little bit harder hitting. I'm going to wait for the kill shot. Let them just keep wasting tokens. Not worth attacking into this. Then they just crack back for at least two. And they can build up their team theoretically with this and do the uh, goblin war shot or whatever that is for one red. Rakdos. That'd be a scary party to attend, wouldn't it? All right. Putrid back. Don't like that because well, we're still two turns away. Plus with the wither damage. That's a thing. Hmm. I like this because we can feign. Oh, wait, no. Never mind. That logic doesn't work. We can one-shot that, I believe. It's been a long time since I've run up against a uh, putrid goblin. It's open for the putrid block there. Might be dead here, depending. They've got a lot of cards and options in hand. Okay. One goblin down. I was really hoping for a putrid block there. Because that would be first strike infect, and it would die with negative 1-1, one, one, so it doesn't come back. I believe that's how that works. Has he got a bushwhacker right behind this? Thank you, Veo TV. Good to have you with us. Me and my rules knowledge is probably the weakest part of my game. I go by memory and visuals usually. Not worried about this. Plus, we're representing prismatic strands here. I'm going to crash in with both. I want to just keep the numbers down so we don't get bushwhacked. Really want him to block with that goblin, the putrid one. Okay, a dork is down. We get in for one. 
Billy Idol is having a double feature. Showing my age with that reference. Most people probably know who Billy Idol is, right? I think even my sons do. If you grew up when MTV actually played videos, music videos, you know what I'm talking about. Ooh, I like this play. I think that's just there for the value. They're not doing the uh, first day of class plan. I don't know why you wouldn't fit in a sub theme there. We just haven't seen it yet. Just a very honest go wide goblin list so far. Have we seen a deadly dispute yet? It's just been offering, right? <laughs> What's MTV? <laughs> A lot of options, getting nervous. Opponent's four cards up. I have death on the board if we can just. Dark Dweller showing up. Hmm. Really like if I would have spent one more turn with that Umbra on the priest there, but I'm glad it's there now. Tough decisions here. Does he got like that Goblin War Strike again? If he does, we'll see it now. I think it's a sorcery. There it is. Pop! Tough place to be. Alrighty. Let's block here. What'll die? What'll die? We'll do this and we'll do this. Same thing that if he kills the priest, that's fine. The goblin sledder will die. At the end of uh, end of the turn here. It's wither damage. Coming in for max crunch. Boy, can we draw a blessing, please? Even a prismatic strands. Only on, done one damage to him with Infect here. Okay, that's interesting. We'll get rid of that combo anyway. Let's come in. Feeling a bit vulnerable. They're hellbent. Have to block. Get him to two. God, where are our blessings at? Start again. <laughs> Thought something would be in our yard by now. That Fangraph's just got nothing to do. What a lonely graveyard. Draw on the card. Mountain showing up. Owner of a lonely yard. <laughs> yeah, get a little yes in there. I love that song. Talk about a good video. That was one of the first good videos I remember growing up. Ah, there we go. Feeling nice and new. Let's go. I'm going to attack with these three so they block missionary. I can bring it back, gain some life. Yeah, if they got some sort of goblin grenade shenanigans, we can do it. But they didn't drop that land that they drew, so we're still feeling pretty good about that. One, two, three. Let's keep both options open. There we go. Confend graph and strands here. Are they 
revealing now. Reveal it. Do it. I could have Vampiric Link. A War Marshal. All right. Vault Apes with Body. Interesting choice. Can't really go wide against me. Wish I could kill my own mercenary here. Or missionary. <laughs> mercenary. No attacks here. Come on, list. Bring this back. Hmm. Let's sit back here. It dies. What happened anyway? This way, I have another defender. Even though we're sitting on a strands here, you never know. There's useless card number six. So far, wanting that goblin lookout to pull the trigger here. It might have a flaring pain. Am I overthinking this? Probably. Bring out the course. We'll swing out with our infect dudes. Boom, boom, boom. Why not? Nah, I'll keep them back. It's cool to attack with three creatures, only one taps. That feels pretty sweet. To a turn, getting there slowly, very slowly. Would have meant the difference if I waited on that Umbro for the Billy Idol, but I don't know if we'd still be alive. That was kind of a key blocker, having a first strike Umbra on something in certain matchups like this one. It feels like uh, overpowered for sure. <laughs> I'll try to remember to take a picture for our community YouTube page of the Mox Boarding House with me and my boys. Or the whole fam, maybe. Who knows? I guess they can block Crawling Course with that. really like seeing this card. Let's keep them honest. Boom, boom, boom. Why not? That's a beneficial block either way. Got to whittle the numbers eventually here. Not sure where our Benevolent Blessings are, or even a Bodyguard at this point. Yeah, that was a silly attack. Oh, well, we'll still get a critter out of the deal. 11 11 crunch really like seeing this other icker claw here we go we've got metal craft folks oops <laughs> pow up Just holding off the inevitable only one card in their hand. I'm not too worried about sort of alpha strikes. Let's be honest. The only reason uh, I hate saying that, I'm always trying to be honest. I hate how that has slipped into my mind. That is being said way too much, at least here in the States. Ugh, I prolong it more and more. <laughs> then craft the course. <laughs> how to play magic badly. My papa agenda. Oh, man, now? Come on, man. Well, we can do this one of two ways, and we'll do it both ways. We'll fengraft back the thing, and we'll just win right here. We'll call this, say red. Actually, we might not win right now, but I still want to say red. We'll bring this back. One, two, three. Be the bodyguard. Oh, you jerk. <laughs> Oh, well. Now we're a little naked. A little more naked. Let's see, he has to block there. I'll go there. All right. Let's do that. I thought I could bring back the bodyguard and do it again, but that bad attack, we would have won right there. Got to block with the persist goblin. Ah. 
Arr, 50% chance we go down. I guess you could trip the goblin lookout, sacrifice something to at least trade with the myrrh there. Better do it before first strike happens. Crunch. Do it. Nope. Okay. Could have traded with the myrrh there. If you had macabre, you could have exiled the course in response. I know. <laughs> Overboarding 101. Time to put on the pressure here. Gosh, I wish I had a uh, infect war strike. That'd be pretty cool for every infect creature on the. That's actually almost unplayable because it's pretty weird to go wide with infect, right? But that would be pretty trippy. Always looked for a way to do that. Slipping some proliferate in this list, huh? All of a sudden, I really have to go number one. Uh oh. Then they got another one behind it. Are they going to beat us? I'm going to feel so silly with a strand in my hand. All right. Oh, thank God. <laughs> we came back to do it. All right, everybody. Like I said, we're going to be off next week on the April 6th. So unless you like being bored and being in a room of nobodies, who knows? Maybe a mind stab throw will show up just for the hell of it, right? <laughs> I won't be here. So, But in two weeks, we'll be back, uh, probably playing something to do with that gutter snipe. I'm not making any promises, though. But until then, we shall go out with, hmm, let me see. Yeah, I guess we'll do our little deck box here. Loving it. I uh, just got, I think, three orders from Germany. Germany really likes my deck boxes. Um, there's been like five sales there and like one in Canada. And I'm really surprised. Honestly, I was like, I was going to be happy with like two sales per year or something. But here's more on that. And I'll be back in two weeks, guys. Adios. I probably won't be on too much this weekend, but I'll see you around. Adios. Hey, everybody. It's Deluxicon from Propaganda. If you want the ultimate deck box in luxury, deck engineering, and of all things toughness, the Mach 3 by LDB Duel is insanely impressive, and I'm hard to impress. Let's zoom in on here. We've got your typical backside with the dice compartment and, of course, our propaganda sleeved cards. But what's really cool about this is the entire front comes off for when you're not playing. It comes on nice and easily, robust, thick. It's a monster. The Luxacoff's Wild Mongrel Bubblegum blows colored bubbles. Changes colors while you chew. Discard your old brand for something new. Mm, the Lexicos Wild Mongrel Bubblegum. It's yummy.